Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He just. was 16 years old and uh, I, don't know, I guess growing up I've always always uh, had a hunger for God because I knew that I knew that he was real there was always that hunger in there for me and then at age of 16 actually before that I really started seeking God I would spend time uh, in the word and just by myself just worshiping God and you know I could feel his presence you know I knew it was something more than just uh an experience from other people, but it was something I experienced myself. And uh, so whenever I felt the call to preach, I really buckled down. And, uh, you know, I've heard it said that, you know, well, all teenagers, they're going to rebel, you know, regardless of what you do. But, you know, God gives us all a choice. You know, you don't have to rebel against God or your parents or anything. You know, God leaves that choice up to you. You can you can have as much of God or as little of God as you want. You know, he doesn't force anybody to serve him. He doesn't force anybody to love him. You know, you can say what you want to about him, good or bad, but it all comes down to what you want to do. Uh, I appreciate that prayer tonight. That was, that was really good. I can just tell that, you know, it really comes from the heart, uh, nothing fake. And, uh, you know, now's the time. Now's the time, you know, I don't believe it's by accident that God has all y'all here together as a group under uh, good leadership, you know, and learn the truth. It's, I can tell this youth group is more than just wanting to learn games and have fun, but, you know, you wouldn't be here on, a, on an evening like tonight uh, if you wasn't hungry for God. All right, so let's, uh, let's close our eyes. We're going to uh, pray again. Uh, before we pray, those, who all brought their Bibles tonight? Does, there, does everybody have a Bible? Like at home and stuff. Does anybody need a Bible that doesn't have one? Alright, let, let's just uh, close our eyes. We're just going to spend some time just uh, fellowshipping with God, okay? Just hold on a second. Right. If you need a Bible, you just keep your hand up. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs. It's in the Old Testament. About halfway in the Bible. Open your Bible in half. You're going to be pretty close to it. chapters in Proverbs, so you know, what a lot of people do, and this this would be something good, you know, if you have a desire to know more about the Word of God, but you don't know where to begin, or, you know, you, you're real busy and you don't have a lot of time, uh, you can take whatever day of the month it is, say if today is, what is today, the 18th, 18th I think. you know, you can go to Proverbs chapter 18. And let that be your devotion for today. So there's basically one proverb, one chapter for each day of the month. So that's a good place, you know, to, to start out at if you really want to start getting into the Word. But uh, these couple of verses right here are some of my favorite in the Bible. In fact, whenever somebody comes to me with a problem or, or is going through something or wants prayer or needs guidance especially, this is... This is the one, these two verses here is the one place that I'll take them to because it can apply for, it applies for everybody, regardless how old or how young you are. How many people, 
have a desire to know what God's will is for your life. I think everybody would. Well, here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. I don't know what any other translation says, but you know, this verse is pretty pretty well explanatory. You know, you don't have to you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out, but it all it says is trust in God with all your heart and don't lean into your own what your mind tells you to do. But if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he'll direct your paths. Uh, there's a good friend of, of, of a minister, uh, he's a friend of mine, and he's somebody who I really look up to and who I really respect. And uh, he, had a, he had an encounter with God and he wrote down some of the things that God was speaking to him. And uh, a lot of it was about direction and uh, the path in his life. And God showed him, it like he was showing him some things, and he, and he showed him like a, a picture of this, this forest. He was in the woods and he said, uh, you know, you can't see the path that I have for you because of all these obstacles, all these trees that are in the way. He says, but look what happens whenever I raise you up. And it was like God just sort of lifted him up above all the trees of the forest. And then he could start seeing the path that laid out ahead of him. And God started speaking to him. He says, you see down there? That's the next place I want you to go. Or even, and he would show him on down further. He said, you see down there? He's like, that bridge you're supposed to cross has been washed out. He says, so I'm going to redirect you to another path. He says, on down there, there's famine in the land. So over here is where you want to find provision at. And what he was saying, showing him is that with these earthbound eyes, you can only see so far. You can only see what's ahead of you. You know, with your own natural mind, your natural understanding. But God was showing him, whenever you start seeing the way I see things, when you let me lift you up, he says, I'm going to show you the path that I have for your life. He says, I'm going to show you the best way to get there and the quickest way to get there. You know, when Jesus was uh, upon this earth, you know, I'd love to have been one of the 12 apostles, you know, that was uh, with him at all the times, you know, to see the miracles in person and hear the stories and see him raise the dead and heal the blind. And if you ever think about it, that if you're one of the people that was with Jesus all the time and if you had a question that all you had to do was just turn around and ask Jesus a question it could be what, whatever it was just turn to him ask him the question and he would just turn simply turn to you and he would answer the question you know he wouldn't ignore you he wouldn't say well I don't know I have to get back to you in a month or two on that but he was just just like we just like I would ask Steve a question you know I could ask him how was work today Steve and what would you say? Rainy. Rainy. <laughs> but Jesus told his disciples, he says, you know, he says, it's important. He says, it's expedient. It means of the utmost, the highest importance that I die and that I leave this earth. And his disciples, they couldn't understand. They said, Jesus, how could it be so important? You know, you do all the miracles. You, you heal the blind. You... You heal the sick, you raise the dead, you cast out devils. You know, you're, you're the power of God. You are God in the flesh. So how can you say it's important that you go away and you're going to leave us here? But Jesus says, just because I go away, he says, I have to go away so I can send the Holy Spirit to come back here. You see, the one thing about Jesus, he could only be at one place at a time here on this earth. He was in the Holy Land, like like Stephen's talking about. Not the Holy Land in Florida, the real Holy Land. <laughs> he didn't have to buy a ticket. He didn't have to buy a ticket, no. There wasn't no train to ride. But uh, but he could only be at one place at a time. He was mainly there in Israel and Jerusalem. So that means that the only people he could heal was the people that he came in contact with. The only people he could minister to was the, the ones that was there around him. He says, but if I go away... He says, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, and not only is He going to be with you, but He's going to be inside you. 
And not only that, the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at one time. You see, when Jesus was a man on this earth, he, he came in the form of a man. You see his little disciples up here. <laughs> and those were the ones that was around him. He says, but if I go away, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be everywhere, and he's going to be in you. And he says, and these miracles and the works that I do, he says, I'm going to give you the authority and the power to do that. You see, uh, regardless, regardless of age or whatever, there's a there's a young man in the Bible called Timothy. That's good. I'm going to go to Timothy. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to, but you can if you want to. First Timothy chapter four. Timothy, he was, a, he was a young pastor. But in chapter 4, verse 12, he says, Let no man despise your youth, but be an example of the believers. And on in verse 14, he says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. Now, how many people here you have a desire not only to know God, but to be able to do things for God. I think everybody would agree to that. You know, how many people would have a desire for God to be able to, to use you? How would you like to, to be able to pray for somebody and you see that God just miraculously heals them, you know, instantly? You know, a lot of times we think that it has to be in a church service, in a setting like this. But you know where Jesus' most of his miracles took place? Most of Jesus' miracles took place out in the public. He was usually out in just the going streets. from one place to the other, just yeah, traveling. Just yeah. traveling, out in the wilderness. Just as he was living his daily life, that's where the majority of Jesus' miracles took place. You know, so, you know, God has you all here right now to be trained up. You know, and he, he has you under good leadership, good pastors, good youth pastors. You know, that's going to teach you the truth. So you're not only here just for what you would call a youth group, but, you know, you're like soldiers that God is equipping in the Spirit. You know, and the Holy, God sent the Holy Spirit to, to live in each side of us. And just like you were praying that prayer, what, what grade are you in? I'm in ninth. Ninth grade. Were you going to go to Catholic?